Researchers in the US have generated electricity from the Earth's rotation. Until now, this was thought to be impossible by physics laws. But the researchers have found a loophole. Thanks to a special material, they were able to generate a small amount of electricity. If this could be done on a large scale, it would provide a completely new source of energy, independent of wind and weather. In this video, we will talk about how the researchers managed to generate electricity from the Earth's rotation, why the laws of physics were not violated, and whether this will be the energy production of the future. And with that, welcome to the German Science Guy. I'm Dr. Jakob Botton, and in Germany, we say Los geht's. The Earth rotates at 464.6 meters per second relative to the equator, apart from small fluctuations due to tides or meteorological influences. For comparison, the speed of sound is 343 meters per second. This gives the Earth a rotational energy of 6 times 10 to the power of 22 kilowatt hours, a 6 with 22 zeros. This corresponds to the energy of 100 trillion megatons of TNT or 2.6 billion times the global electricity consumption in 2019. In short, an incredible huge amount of energy. If we could harness even a fraction of this energy, we would have an emission-free and sustainable energy source. Although this is not yet possible, researchers have been able to show that energy can be obtained from the Earth rotation. But to be honest, only in a very small quantity so far. So what did they do? Ok, let's start at the beginning. In addition to the Earth rotation, the Earth magnetic field is also required. This is created by the movement of the Earth liquid iron core. To better understand this, let's imagine the magnetic field as lines like these. You may remember this, in physics class you have magnetic needles or some iron particles on a plate. When you hold a magnet under the plate, the needles align themselves along the magnetic field. This means that the magnetic field lines, so the lines on which, for example, these iron particles lie, run from the magnetic north pole to the magnetic south pole. Please note, the magnetic south pole is near the geographic north pole and the magnetic north pole is near the geographic south pole. This is something that gets mixed up a lot. This is because it has been determined that the north pole of a magnetic needle should point towards geographic north, which makes a lot of sense, right? Ok, back to the topic. The magnetic field now consists of several components, which together form the entire field. This will be important again in a moment. But before we look at how the researchers produced electricity, we need to look at three basic principles of physics on which this is based. But don't worry, it's not complicated. The first phenomenon is the Lorentz force. This is simply a force that acts on moving charged particles in a magnetic field, for example on electrons. To do this, they must move perpendicular or diagonally to the magnetic field lines. They are then deflected by the Lorentz force. This applies to free charged particles or those in an electrical conductor. You may remember this from an experiment at school. You have a conductor in a magnetic field. If you let current flow through the conductor, it moves to the left or to the right in the direction in which the charged particles are deflected. And you can even find out which direction this is using the three finger or right hand rule. The thumb indicates the direction of the current, the index finger indicates the direction of the magnetic field and the middle finger indicates the direction of the force. Ok, let's get to the second phenomenon, it's induction. You may be familiar with this from electrical motors. The law of induction states roughly that when a magnetic field in which a conductor is located changes, an electric current is generated in the conductor. The magnetic field can change in various ways, for example by moving a bar magnet through a conductor, rotating the conductor in the magnetic field or changing the area enclosed by a conductor. And then there's a third phenomenon, it's the Hall effect. When charge carriers such as electrons move through a magnetic field, the Lorentz force acts on them. This means that they are deflected all in one direction. This then creates an electric field or voltage. So there are more negative charges on one side than on the other. The resulting electrical force then counteracts the Lorentz force and balances it out. Ok, this is actually enough for now. These are the basics. So let's finally get to the researchers idea of generating electricity through the earth rotation and how it went from an idea to an implementation. So it all began in 2016 when they published a paper. And there they transfer these fundamental phenomena we just talked about to the earth. 
Earth has a magnetic field that consists of several components, and some of these components are symmetrical to Earth's axis of rotation. The researchers say that when Earth rotates, it rotates through these components of the magnetic field, so to speak. There are free charged particles in the Earth's crust, both positive and negative. Because the Earth is in a magnetic field, the Lorentz force also acts on these particles. This means that they move. And moving charges are nothing more than electricity. Perfect. Now we have our electricity that it is for this video, so goodbye. I'm, I'm joking. Of course, that was just for fun. It's not quite that simple. The Hall effect occurs. The positive and negative charges are separated and form an electric field. This counteracts the Lorentz force, and when the forces are balanced, the particles no longer move apart. So no current flows or only until the forces are balanced. The same applies to an electrical conductor on Earth. The electrons rearrange themselves so quickly to balance the forces that practically no current flow is there. So in order to actually generate a current, you have to ensure that the forces do not cancel each other out. And researchers have found a solution for precisely this problem. Permeable materials. Permeable materials were already known before, but research Researchers see them as a solution to their problem. These are materials that can conduct or deflect magnetic flux, so to speak. Put simply, magnetic flux is the amount of magnetic field through a surface. By deflecting the magnetic flux, the material changes the magnetic field within itself in such a way that the forces in the material are not balanced. This applies initially to the electrostatic case, so when the electric field does not move and everything is static. However, when it moves, for example, because the charges move, other components also come into play. No one could simply move an object made of permeable material in the Earth's magnetic field. This would change the magnetic flux and thus the magnetic field with the position of the object. But ultimately, it always changes in such a way that a balance of forces is restored, so no current flows. This happens so quickly that the magnetic field moves with the object, so to speak. So no current flows because the magnetic field adapts so quickly to balance the forces. That is why the material needs a second property, a delayed adjustment of the magnetic field. So it tries to reach the state of equilibrium again, but it cannot do so so quickly. The magnetic field lags behind, so to speak. This means that as long as the object is moving, a current can flow because the forces are not balanced quickly enough. This movement of the object is caused by the Earth rotation, because the Earth rotates through part of the magnetic field. So to summarize, in order to generate electricity through the Earth rotation and magnetic field, you need a material with two important properties. First, it must change the magnetic field, and second, the charges in the material must not arrange themselves in such a way that the forces balance each other out. In their paper, the researchers also suggest a material that could be used for this purpose. Manganese zinc ferrite, a mixture of manganese, zinc, iron and oxygen. However, in order to actually produce electricity, a hollow cylinder made of this material is required. This was a suggestion made by the researchers, but they also say that other shapes and materials could be possible. The energy produced in this way ultimately comes from the Earth rotation. According to the researchers, this is the same principle as a magnetic brake. The cylinder is slowed down because the resulting forces of the fields, so the magnetic and induced electric fields, want to balance each other out, so they act against each other. This releases energy. And because the cylinder is carried by the Earth, the Earth is slowed down a little bit. But that would mean that our days would become longer and we would have to work more. But there's no reason to be sad, assuming we were to generate all the energy consumed worldwide in 2022 using this method, the Earth would rotate just 7 milliseconds slower over the course of the century. Okay, so much to the theory, then at the beginning of this year came the breakthrough. Researchers in the US succeeded in generating energy from the Earth rotation. It must be said that they are not the first to attempt this. Dutch researchers conducted a similar experiment back in 2018, but it was unsuccessfully. They measured a significantly lower voltage than expected. We will come back to why this might be in a moment. Let's first take a look at the US researchers' experiment. 
they used a manganese zinc ferrite cylinder measuring just under 30 centimeters in length. It was aligned perpendicular to the magnetic field and the direction of the earth movement. Three measuring devices were attached to the cylinder, one to measure the current and voltage and two to measure the temperature. The values were recorded every 10 seconds for 5 to 10 hours. The researchers expected a voltage of 13.7 microvolts plus minus 7.2 microvolts. That is extremely low. We will come back to this also in a moment. However, there's another problem with this experiment that needs to be addressed, namely thermal voltages. If the solder joints on the conductor have different temperatures, a voltage can occur, which is known as a Zeebeck effect. The temperature differences can simply be caused by fluctuations in room temperature. This voltage can be as high as 120 microvolts. And these 120 microvolts can, of course, simply superimpose the 13.7 microvolts. But the researchers have calculated this effect out. To do this, they measured the temperature differences between the ends of the cylinder. The voltage that is then measured consists of the Zeebeck voltage and the voltage generated by the Earth rotation. And indeed, the researchers measured a voltage. With the Zeebeck voltage factored out, it was 17.3 microvolts. In addition to the voltage, they also measured the current, which was 25.4 nanoamperes. The Dutch researchers measured just 1.5 microvolts. They attribute this to the interference voltages rather than voltages generated by the Earth rotation. But why was the US experiment successful? The US researchers see several reasons for this. First, they criticize the fact that the cylinder used by the Dutch researchers was far too short in comparison to its diameter. The cylinder was only 3 cm long. Second, the Zeebeck effect was not controlled and measured. In addition, both research groups rotated the cylinder for control purposes. The Dutch researchers used this to calculate out interference voltages. However, the US researchers say that the cylinder was rotated the wrong way. That is not along the x-axis, but along the z-axis. This and other minor issues meant that only such a low voltage could be measured. But what does the US researchers' result mean now? Will we soon be generating our electricity from the Earth rotations? Before we look at that, click subscribe and activate the bell so you don't miss any more videos. And that brings us to the big hurdle of this video, the part where we look at the problems of news and innovations out of science. So, the short answer is, it is extremely unlikely that we will soon be producing electricity on a large scale from the Earth rotation. There are two main reasons for this. Firstly, the technology has only been tested by one working group. The researchers themselves say that it is needed to be tested again by independent groups. By way of comparison, the action potential of a human cell, which is used to transmit information between cells, can be 140 millivolts. That is more than 8,000 times as much. This shows how insignificantly these 70 microvolts are and in combination with the low current, we are also talking about a microscopically small amount of power. This is very far from truly relevant amounts of energy. The researchers themselves see things somewhat differently. They definitely see the potential for achieving high power and as a long-term application they envision, for example, satellites in which devices could run using this technology. However, I doubt whether this is worth the effort for so little energy. Nevertheless, I have to say, I found this research really, really interesting and of course, it would be fascinating if it's possible to generate electricity from the Earth rotation, at least if no errors have crept into this experiment because, to be honest, given the low power output we are talking about here, it has to be said that it is very prone to errors. But I find the idea itself pretty amazing. And it also shows that science is and always was very creative and is always good for surprises. And that's really good news, especially in today's world with so many problems, we need creative solutions. Feel free to write your own thoughts about this in the comments. What do you think about the researcher's idea and whether you know of any other creative ideas from the world of science so I can have a look into that too. Otherwise, you can find another video here about a new battery technology. Check it out now and I say Auf Wiedersehen, which means goodbye in German. Thank you for watching, your Jacob.